Hi everyone, I'm going straight in with the drawing today because I've somehow managed to pick up a lovely summer cold and I'm a bit croaky and also not sure how long my voice is going to hold out so I thought I'd better try and get this talked through before I lose my voice completely. Today I'm going to be painting with the Core Hychroma set which is the six colours that I swatched out in my previous video and I really struggled to think of something to draw and paint for this video. The magpie painting that I did for the earth colours came to me straight away but just sometimes I find I'll just have a complete mental block and you just really have to work through it so I explored the internet looking around for some inspiration and I finally found a picture which I thought might work quite well for these colours and I've posted a link to the reference photo that I used and you can find that linked in the description below. So here I am drawing out the picture in my sketchbook. I'm using the Etcher sketchbook 100% cotton paper and it's cold press so it, there is some texture and it is quite noticeable when you're drawing. It's not a very smooth paper but this drawing proved to be a lot more complicated than my magpie drawing which was quite a simple shape on the paper whereas this is a lot of tiny shapes and you'll see a bit later how much I struggle when it comes to painting this picture. I'm just finishing up with the drawing and going over it with my kneaded eraser to take off most of the pencil line just leaving a ghost of it so when I paint it you don't see all the pencil lines coming through. Wetting the paper as I usually do this was pretty tough because it was a lot smaller of an area and I'm going in with that lovely cobalt teal and I thought well I've got to have a bright blue sky and this is my brightest blue that I have in this palette so you could see really I couldn't do huge areas at one time so I've started at the top and I'm just kind of working my way down wetting the paper as I go wetting the paints kind of blending it in and going around each of the flowers which is called negative painting. Now I struggled a bit here down the bottom where the leaves and the stems are and that's because I'd rubbed out most of the pencil and it was quite difficult to tell which parts were leaves and which parts were the sky behind it so you'll see me actually paint a few areas which I wasn't supposed to paint and also I've left other areas which are sky blank and I had to go back a few times once I could see the picture better and put those extra pieces in. Now after letting the background dry I'm going in with the leaves. I'm using the green gold here which was a little bit too yellow for my liking so I added a little bit of cobalt teal in to try and make it a bit greener and I found with this palette that while the colours are really really bright they're also mostly light colours so it was quite difficult to get a transition from dark to light to get that really strong value so that was a real challenge with the set that I found. Obviously the darks is in purple you can get that but with the green gold and the quinacridone gold you couldn't get that quite as much so this is quite a pastel piece in the end and I don't think I got quite the values that I wanted to achieve but I did the best that I could with the colours that I had and as you can see I'm going through all of these stems and leaves painting them in. This was quite a fiddly job and probably took me the most time in the whole painting. As you can see I'm just going through with different shades here adding a bit of paint and then kind of diluting it out to try and get a bit of difference in value. Oh yes, and I accidentally painted a leaf a sky colour so I tried to make it a leaf again and made a bit of a mess of that. And going through, I had a few times when I did this I think. So yeah, it did turn out to be a bit of a mess. I don't know how I've missed a little bit of footage there. But as we go on I'm just going through and covering any stalks that I didn't paint the first time because I was letting them dry and there's the little bits of sky that I'm adding again because oopsies I left them out it was so confusing this bit I kind of painted over that stalk of the flower so yes I was having a good day painting here but never mind you just keep going and let your accidents just kind of incorporate into the picture because it's a painting in my sketchbook, you know, I'm not trying to be super perfect. I just want to get something that looks, you know, half decent. <laughs> That's always a good goal to have. All right.
Alrighty, now I'm going into the flowers themselves. I tried to let the paint spread as much as I could to get a more of a gradient feel on the tulips themselves. I will go over them again a bit later to get more definition in the petals. But for now I'm just getting that base colour in, letting the paint spread on the wet paper. That was pretty fun to do. And they are lovely and bright. I really enjoyed the magenta. I'm going back with a bit of gold. I tried to make this one a bit more yellow by using less gold, but it just wasn't working and I was kind of wishing that I had a, a brighter yellow in this set to use, but such is the nature of this challenge that I can only use the six colours provided. I mixed this one with a bit of magenta as well as the orange and the gold. And then I decided I wanted to try mixing the dioxazine purple with some of that cobalt teal to see if I could get more of a stronger blue, purplier blue, I don't know, but it didn't turn out too badly. In, in the end I just put more cobalt teal on it. And then I did another teal one and decided it was just too close to the sky. So I added in magenta over the top and it ended up looking almost exactly the same as the one below it. So I put in a bit of strong dioxazine purple and some strong cobalt teal just to make it a bit more interesting. That flower at the back, I just decided to use pure dioxazine purple and you could see it really running on the paper, leaving tendrils. I left it a little bit just to give it a bit of interest. Now this one was actually supposed to be a leaf, but I painted it as a flower. Oops! Well, there's no going back now, so onward we go. If you look at the reference image, you'll see that I wasn't exactly following their colour scheme to the T, because a lot of them they had were white flowers and I wanted to paint all of my flowers. So really I didn't have that much of a plan as to which flower was going to be which colour. I just started and let my instincts do the work for me. I just went along and tried to pick colours that contrasted with each other nicely. Here's me trying once again to make blue out of the cobalt teal and the dioxazine purple. I think that one wasn't too bad. It was, it was almost like a cobalt blue. And then I picked another orange, just because I quite liked the warm colour. And with this last one, I really tried to just let that magenta run because I just thought that would look really cool. And I left it as is. Oh, and I had one more flower here. That's right, of course. I went in again with the gold. I maybe used that colour scheme a bit too often, but I was fairly limited in my choice of colours here. And this is where I'm going back and trying to add in more petal definition because the paints had dried and they do go quite flat and it wasn't very exciting. So I went through and just tried to make each flower look a bit more like a tulip and less like a amorphous blob. Yes, adding just a bit more shadow and value as much as I possibly could. I thought this set of colours does complement each other really well and the colours do look nice together. You could use all of them and really not make too much of a mess, though I guess if you mix them all together you'd still make mud because, let's face it, purples and greens and oranges are not going to go well together. I'm just going through and making that blue a little bit darker on that one and the purple a bit darker. I think I was a bit happy with this painting after I'd actually gone through again and added that definition. I was looking at it a while back and thinking, um, yeah, this looks like a total dog's breakfast and I'm a bit embarrassed by it, but no, I think I managed to pull it back. Always in a painting there will be that ugly stage where I just want to throw the whole thing out and start all over again. But usually I try not to give up until I've actually done a few more layers because layering is key, it really is. You'll find that the first couple of layers you do might not look so great, but then when you start adding that detail and richness of colour on top, it's amazing how it actually will come out. So the lesson here is don't give up because you never know what will happen once you add those details in. On this flower I painted over it again with water and added another layer. I was really hoping I wouldn't lose that nice gradient and it did get a little patchy but I left it as it was and I still quite like it. I'm going over the leaves again because I think of the whole painting those are the things I was least satisfied with just because I could not get that nice level of darkness and shadow against the lightness. It was just a real struggle in this case but 
it looks a bit better now that I've gone over it a second time and tried to get a bit more definition on the stems and the leaves. Okay, just making those bits a little darker just to try and separate each other because I had quite a few leaves stacked on top of each other and they looked like a bit of a blob. Now I'm just adding those final touches. I may have added just a little bit more cobalt teal and some of the strongest green gold that I could get. Just finishing up those lines and then I cheated a bit I must admit. I got a white gel pen out because it just needed some highlights. I was having a bit of issue at leaving the highlights in so yeah what are you gonna do? I put the pen over the top and I just think it helps make the flowers pop and I also needed it on the leaves because I was still not super happy with them. I think the ink highlights really finished this piece off and I'll just show you my whole page spread. Thank you so much for watching and I'll swatch you later.